Thank you for making time to be with us tonight on News at 10 on TV3, which is also live on DSTV Channel 279. My name is Grace Hamwa Asai. We're live on our various social media platforms. On Facebook, it's TV3GH. Let's take a look at the major news highlights for the day. The Ministry of Fisheries and Aquaculture Development has lifted the one-month ban placed on fishing. Minister of Fisheries and Aquaculture Development Elizabeth Na Afolikwe cautioned the fishermen against the use of light and chemicals in fishing. Also, lack of teacher accommodation remains a major setback to academic pursuit on the island communities in the Volta estuary in Ada East District. Both teachers and pupils have to cross the Volta River daily on week boats without life jackets to teach and learn. Now, the price of domestic gas will soon drop on the markets, according to Deputy Energy Minister Mohamed Amin Adam. He revealed that government is recalibrating domestic gas prices to be able to achieve the target. And a former National Security Advisor, Brigadier General Joseph Nunumensa, says too much politicization of the country's security services could also be responsible for a recent spate of kidnappings in Ghana. Speaking on TV3's news and current affairs program, The Key Point, he was worried the country is only treating the symptoms and not cause of the menace. Now on the international front tonight, Chief Executive Carrie Lam has announced that the Hong Kong government has suspended its highly controversial plan to allow extraditions to mainland China. The government had argued the proposed extradition bill would plug the loopholes so that the city would not be a safe haven for criminals following a murder case in Taiwan. Protesters expressed concern at increased Chinese influence. Carrie Lam said she had heard the calls for a government to pause and think. Let's go to our first story now. President Akufuadu has, in principle, agreed to a request by Prime Minister of Barbados, Maya Amor Motley, to send some 375 Ghanaian nurses to Barbados to work in a number of the government medical facilities. President Akufuadu and Prime Minister Motley held bilateral talks on Friday, June 14, in Bristol, Barbados. With Barbados facing an acute nursing shortage, the Barbadian Prime Minister, Mayor Amor Montley, said this would be a wonderful opportunity of cooperation between the two countries. Barbados has been facing an acute nursing shortage, and we have agreed that immediately we will pursue the exchange of nurses and to secure nurses initially, but also agree to joint education of nurses as we go forward to order to stabilize our healthcare sector in Barbados. President Ikufado indicated that Ghana has a surplus of nurses, of which some are yet to be placed into public health system. The various things that we agree that we're going to do, supply of nurses, this, that, that, and the others, all of them, we actually do them. That is what, therefore, will make meaningful today's meeting and, and, and exchange. We have a surplus of nurses. Placing them all in our public health system is one of my headaches because there's been a lot who have been produced and for several years I've not been able to do anything with it. So I'm going back. I'll be back in Accra on Monday. The week after, the Prime Minister will hear from me on this matter of the nurses. President Ekofado is the first Ghanaian leader to visit Barbados. The two leaders agreed to reactivate a 2005 cultural, technical and scientific agreement signed between the two countries 
an agreement which has been dormant for 14 years. The discussions also touched on tourism and transportation. As a demonstration of the close ties between Ghana and Barbados, the president expressed his commitment to the establishment of an honorary consulate in Barbados, with Barbados set to establish a high commission in Accra by the end of 2019. Now, away from that, the Ministry of Fisheries and Aquaculture Development has lifted the one-month ban placed on fishing. Fishermen have been cautioned against the use of light and chemicals in fishing. Reports by Joseph Armstrong, Gold, Alagbe. It's 3 p.m., the landing beach of Pram Pram. Fishermen are busy painting and patching their net. It's been a whole month without doing what they're trained to do best. Fishing is their work. But in accordance with Section 42 to 44 of the Fisheries Act, the Fisheries Commission and the Ministry placed a ban on fishing, dubbed the closed season mechanism. The ban, which was the first of its kind, was to stop trawler operations within one month. The one month is over and the fishermen are busy preparing to resume work. In a ceremony to officially lift the ban, the Minister of Fisheries and Aquaculture Development, Elizabeth Na Afolekwe, noted that continuing with a close seizing policy with good fisheries management and enforcement practices against illegal fishing, it was suspected that landing of small pelagic fish by artisanal fisheries would increase from 15,000 metric tons to 90,000 metric tons by the year 2025. We officially lift the ban on fishing activities for the artisanal sector. The close season has come to stay with us. We will continue with the implementation in subsequent years in order to realize a meaningful impact. Some fisher folks expressed their concern about the close season. Those of them used to eat legal fishing and etc. they should stop. So that our sea should be peace. Uh, one month again, again, maybe. Now After the one month ban, we are hoping to make more catch. Ghana has over 13,000 artisanal canoes, 80 Ghanaian flag trawlers, and 300 semi industrial boats on her waters. Although fishing is very high, the catch had been extremely low. But after one month of placing a ban on fishing, the fishermen are hoping to make more catch. So let's do one of our headline stories, which is expected to bring some relief to consumers of gas. Now, the news is that the price of domestic gas will soon drop on the markets, according to Deputy Energy Minister Mohamed Amin Adam. He revealed that government is recalibrating domestic gas prices to be able to achieve the target. The decision to recalibrate follows various complaints from businesses about the high cost of the commodity, which makes it difficult for their businesses to thrive. While delivering his keynote address at the Ghana Mining and Energy Summit in Accra, Deputy Energy Minister in charge of Petroleum, Dr. Mohamed Amin Adam, said gas prices will be reduced soon. We are also recalibrating domestic gas prices negotiating with the oil and gas producers to ensure that we bring gas prices down. We are doing all this because we know that cheaper sources of power is essential for growth of our economy. It's essential for your operation as mining companies. Cost of electricity has been one of the major challenges facing the mining sector. The minister assured that the era of constant power outages is over with various government interventions in place to also reduce the cost of energy. I want to assure you that as partners in development, the government is committed to working with industry by ensuring that your businesses are safeguarded and not disrupted by unplanned energy challenges. The theme for this year's summit is harnessing mining and energy to accelerate national development. Well, some good news there. We'll be looking forward to it happening anytime soon. Let's just stay in that sector where the Petroleum Commission has outdoored five students to undergo a welding training program at the North Alberta Institute of Technology in Edmonton, Canada. The one-year program is expected to equip the students with the requisite skills for international participation. 
The students are expected to start the one-year specialized world in training program in September this year. On their return in September 2020, the trained welders are expected to undertake training of trainers program in order to transfer skills learned with their colleague welders in Ghana. Consultant for the Accelerated Oil and Gas Capacity Building Project at the Commission, Dr. Paul Frimpon, noted that many of the welders in Ghana are unable to participate in the industry because they do not hold the certifications required by the industry, hence the need for such training programs. The training, which cost about $250,000, is sponsored by Baker Hughes GE. Senior Accounts Manager at the North Alberta Institute of Technology, Ignacio Garcia, was optimistic about the training program. He assured that the students will return to Ghana with the required skills to undertake welding projects in the oil and gas industry. You're watching News at 10 on TV3, also live on DSTV Channel 279. We're back with more stories after this break. Don't go away. Welcome back. Let's talk about security now. A former National Security Advisor, Brigadier General Joseph Nunumensa, says too much politicization of the country's security services could also be responsible for recent spate of kidnappings in Ghana. Speaking on TV3's News and Current Affairs Analysis Program, the key point, he was worried the country is only treating the symptoms and not cause of the menace. The former National Security Advisor Brigadier General Joseph Nunu Mensa was concerned about changes to Ghana's security heads any time a new party assumes office. We are going astray because, oh, this is NPP, this is NDC, but Ghana is going astray. Mm. So why do you come to power and change the whole security system, change everybody there? You don't build expertise. Knowledge comes from experience. And if you don't have experience, you, you have what will happen with the with the, the attack of the girls and all that's happening. All these are happening because of reasons which you should understand. We are treating the cause, the, 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 the symptoms, not the causes. A security expert, Colonel Festa Sabwaji, retired, who was also on the program, called for a comprehensive strategy to deal with the recent spate of kidnappings. We tend to be ad hoc in how we manage security in this country. Have we begun to develop a concrete, comprehensive strategy to address um, this, this issue of kidnapping? Or are we just talking about it? And when the dust settles, that is the end of it. Meanwhile, the Dean of Studies and Research at the Institute of Local Government, Dr. Eric Odrosai, is urging Ghanaians to be more security conscious in the wake of the recent kidnappings. The average Ghanaian is not security conscious. Mm -hmm. Call a home, ask of one question or ask one question, and they'll give you about a thousand answers, mm -hmm. volunteered information. Two. Look at the number plates, vehicle number plates we have in this country, especially the foreign number plates. Some of them, we haven't even oriented our people to even memorize them. Some, it is even difficult for you to even mention them. What have we done about that? Dr. Osai also queried the way and manner informants are treated, which may be preventing the public from volunteering information to security agencies. But again, let me also say this to the security agencies. They should be able to protect their informants. It's very important. Ghanaians wants assurance that when we give you the information, you protect our identity. If you blow their cover, that's the end of you. You deter people. You deter people. And that is what many people are afraid of. Many people have information they want to give out. But the question is, how would I be protected? On Wednesday, June 12, security forces rescued two Canadian women who were abducted in Kumasi on June 4. Security operatives arrested eight persons made up of five Ghanaians and three Nigerians in connection with the kidnapping. The pair, Lauren Tilly and Bailey Chitty, had been in Ghana on a volunteering program by Youth Challenge International, an international development organization headquartered in Toronto. Their rescue has led many to question why it has taken so long to find the Takradi girls and whether the police is putting in the same effort to rescue them. 
But government says the security services are doing their best to have the three girls rescued and reunited with their families. On June 12, the Second D High Court too remanded a 29-year-old Nigerian John Oji into custody in connection with the kidnappings. Oji was charged with conspiracy to kidnap and kidnapping and is to reappear on June 26 this year. Another suspect, Samuel Odotuk, had earlier mentioned John Oji as a key suspect to unraveling the whereabouts of the kidnapped girls. The three girls, Priscilla Bentum, Priscilla Mantibia Crunchy and Ruth Lovequason, were kidnapped at different communities within the Takradi metropolis. Now, a 14-year-old primary three pupil of the St. Anne's Primary School at Damongo in the Savannah region has been released on bail. Police in the region say they are still investigating the issue to make sure that the truth that led to the boys' arrest comes out. You're still watching News at 10 on TV3, also live on DSTV Channel 279. Send us your views and comments on our various social media platforms, and they will be read live on this platform. Uh, to other stories now, a man believed to be in his 30s has been lynched by a mob at Agumanya Ablochi in the Lower Manya Krobo municipality of the Eastern region. Police have, however, started investigations into circumstances surrounding the lynching of the unidentified man whose body was discovered in a gutter in the early hours of Saturday. The body showed multiple injuries from the attack when a team of police officers from Odumase found it but has been deposited at the Etua Government Hospital morgue for autopsy. Residents said they did not know where he came from, adding that they only found his lifeless body in the morning. Detective Inspector George Cranting of the Odumase Police Station said his outfits received information on the incident at 7.30 a.m. And the Department of Archaeology and Heritage Studies at the University of Ghana and the Wildlife Division of the Forestry Commission have launched a partnership project to conserve cultural and biological heritage of Ghana and the West Africa sub-region. The project seeks to coordinate and facilitate systematic interdisciplinary research in protected areas. As the West African Biocultural Heritage Conservation Project, which is located in the Shire Hills Conservation Resort, it will also seek to protect areas such as national parks, resource reserves, wetlands, and associated communities. The project led to the renovation of the hitherto abandoned edifice, now turned into a modern research facility. Stakeholders from the Department of Archaeology and Heritage Studies and Wildlife Division met to finalize a roadmap for the implementation of the project. In the era where we are talking about climate change, humans impact on the environment, food security, the SDGs and their attainment, uh, such a partnership really uh, provides us the opportunity uh, to not just study but also apply our knowledge in heritage studies, in archaeology, in animal biology and conservation science to resource uh, development and their judicious uh, exploitation and utilization. And it was also an office. Yes. yes. Then George Cassover used to have an equipment. Uh -huh. The team toured the area and looked at possible works which can be done on other abandoned facilities in the area. Some buildings which was being used as offices and some were being used by the military in the olden days to store some of their explosives. And these buildings, we have, as part of the renovation of this place, going to put them in good shape for uh, restaurants and also dormitories for people who would like to stay overnight or two days or even to a week. The project is expected to be a training hub for staff of the Forestry Commission and students of the University of Ghana to empower the community and sustain resource use in the area of climate change. 
So let's talk about something which has got many of you talking. Now, over the past week, you've had myself and other presenters on TV3 and bulletins with a sentence, I'm black and proud. Well, we all know why now. If you haven't, then it is the theme for the 13th edition of TV3's most prestigious show, Ghana's Most Beautiful. The show launched on Friday will see finalists define the true meaning of being a proud African woman. It was a welcoming reunion and homecoming for reigning and past queens as they joined group CEO, management and stakeholders of Media General to unveil the theme for this year's Ghana's Most Beautiful. Together with my queens, my past queens and my reigning queen, I hereby declare the 2019 Ghana's Most Beautiful contest themed I'm black and proud, duly launched. Beautiful. Addressing the gathering, Group CEO for Media General, Beatrice Ajuman Abe, promised this year's season will be extremely exciting and treating all aspiring queens to Ghana confidence to join the auditioning train. This 2019 edition would be a giant leap over the previous seasons. Simply put, it would be classic and phenomenal. The audition process is about to kickstart and TV3 would settle for the finest of contestants to sustain the viewing pleasure of our cherished audience. I will entreat all smart, intelligent, and beautiful ladies who wish to be part of this 2019 season to amass confidence and make it to the auditions venues. The CEO promised companies that will join in this season's GMB of attractive packages and guaranteed results. I urge all our clients, companies, and institutions who have not signed on yet to do so and experience the remarkable growth of their products and services would enjoy through this brand association. Exciting and competitive sales packages awaits all who come on board this year's GMB. With a successful 12 seasons and eight wings, the journey to discover the next beauty queen begins with auditions with the Accra starting June 21 through to June 22. Tamale Kumasi and Takradi follows Ghana's most beautiful, redefining beauty to promote national unity. I am black and proud. <laughs> And in the studio, my name is Grace Hamwa Sari, and I'm also black and proud. Many thanks for making time with us. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Mm.